Jump in, Jack, by himself. Are you going to join him? 27 men and women from around the world will meet in the heart of Central Virginia with the same goal. Become a Chesterfield County Police Officer. Sir, you're under arrest. Together, they will be tested as they take the journey. Traffic stops are the cornerstone of police work. The class will be trained to conduct stops appropriately and safely for all parties involved. Today we're getting some practice in on some traffic stops. It's been a, a really eye-opening experience so far. It's just all the different stuff that can happen and what can go wrong and how you got to react. But it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of, a lot of good training going on and I'm happy to be here. Oftentimes in this sort of work, you're going to come come up with situations that are unpredictable Lower and a lot of times please. that can Lower the be volume. with unruly or kind of belligerent people and it's important Radio. to remember that you do have the Thank authority you. to uh, enforce the law. Traffic stop week was fun. Uh, it was pretty intense um, and we learned a lot about how to approach vehicle and sometimes you don't know what to expect in those vehicles so it's always uh, for us to be aware of our officer safety and knowing that we're approaching a vehicle but we don't know what's inside and what could hurt us so it was pretty fun I don't know driver turn your car off do it now uh, right now we're doing felony traffic stops we're going to be doing a mix of hiding things on the suspects for us to find as well as making sure we have our right commands on felony stops to make sure we're doing everything to policy and as well to um, officer safety. Just making sure you're getting all the commands out and making sure you're getting people out one by one and in the safest manner possible for both us and the public. It puts a whole other perspective on, on the traffic stops because things you could see blatantly in the day are completely invisible in the night and you know you can really be taken advantage of as an officer if you're not going to pay attention and be observant and make sure you're doing things piece by piece and taking, you know, don't take anything for granted and look at anything, you know, don't know, you can't overlook anything. Push and hold. I am not a big drinker. Today is DUI day and half the class is split up. So half the class will drink and the other half of the class will test them and then the next day we're gonna swap um, so right now we're in the process of uh, drinking and then the other class will test this pretty soon right here at the top right you see those mm -hmm. During wet lab training, the recruits are brought to a safe level of impairment. The process is monitored by certified instructors and the recruits training officer. We get them impaired because they need to feel what it's like to be at a, the illegal limit, right, to the, the 08, the point 08, they need to feel what it's like to be there based on how much alcohol they've consumed. They can use that to reference, hey, I stopped someone, they said they only had you know, two or three beers, and from their experience, they can kind of reference where they were after two or three beers. The second problem to that is it gives the other recruits that are not drinking an opportunity to do field sobriety on someone that is actually impaired, right? So someone that has consumed alcohol, it's under the influence of alcohol, and then exhibits the clues that we look for on all of our field sobriety tests. Feeling pretty good, sir. We got seven sevens. Label the cup. We're all set for today. I'm banished up on here, right? Yeah. On a person. Okay, Chung doesn't see it. We'll get there. Field sobriety training starts as a basic, why do we want to arrest people for DUI? What, what is the motivation behind doing that? Um, it's obviously very dangerous for people to drive drunk, so we want to drive that message home to get them excited about the class. And then we'll start talking about certain DUI code sections and you know, things of that nature. And then we get into the field sobriety tests uh, where it's very 
very long process as we have to break down every test, you know, piece by piece, just kind of getting them, you know, fluent with the terminology and how to administer the tests. Um, once we feel like they're comfortable with that, which hopefully by the third day of the DUI course, um, the next two days is when they actually get to get to drink, um, and then they perform the field sobriety tests on each other. They all have to administer the field sobriety test properly and almost word for word from what the standard is, like how we're supposed to administer the test, um, because they have to be done a certain way every single time, and we can't let them go out there not doing them properly. So they actually have a certain amount of attempts to be able to administer the field sobriety test properly before further action is taken. Right now, all we have is one point. It's Kato. Dude, we have L O L O O P Q R. And yeah, Today we're learning about forensics. It's uh, very interesting. Very, um, you have to be detail oriented. Very time consuming as well. We had a little practical in the classroom. You really realize every detail matters. Today we did triangulation, which is a method of measurement for a crime scene. So essentially, you take either two points of like normally corners and you'll measure the middle of each piece of evidence so you know where it is in the room and you can recreate exactly the crime scene and what was happening on a sketch. Alright, this week uh, we were doing building searches and we were also doing active shooter scenarios. And right now we are doing um, warrant services and high-risk traffic stops. Everything's going really good. Uh, we did really well on uh, building searches and active shooters. They actually told us that, which was probably one of the first times we actually got complimented. Uh, on this, we have a couple people fail, but I'm pretty sure right. we're going like, to pass and push through this because it's really not too hard. We, just, we know what to do. We just need to execute. All right, come over here and talk. Before heading out into field experience training, the 73rd Basic Academy takes their oath of office, a day they will never forget. So it's obviously a big time for the recruits, um, them actually getting sworn in, seeing their, really seeing their badges for the first time and being able to take them home with them for when, before they go to FET. If you would raise your right hand and repeat after me, I do solemnly swear or affirm I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. The Constitution of the Commonwealth of Virginia. And the ordinances of the County of Chesterfield. And the ordinances of the County of Chesterfield. And I will faithfully and impartially. And I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform. Discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me as a Chesterfield County Police Officer. As a Chesterfield County Police Officer. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. You think about this day on the first week, but you don't think it's actually going to come. Um, it's just a surreal feeling. Um, all the effort and hard work that we've been putting in it just pays off today, and it's it's nice. Excited for Friday. Get out there on the road. Feeling different? Yes, sir. How so? More responsibility. More responsibility. Do you feel like a weight just set on your shoulders? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. So uh, it doesn't mean that uh, when you're outside of here that you can enforce the law. It's so when you hit an FET, okay, right? When you're with another officer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So don't don't get that Superman syndrome and think you're better than everybody else and you're stronger and bigger and better because you're not. You're a human being just like everybody else and you need to continue to act like such, right? Yes, yes sir. sir. Just because this goes on your chest doesn't mean you're the greatest, okay? It just means you're the person that people are going to be looking to. You're the one that's going to be solving the problems. Don't create problems. You solve them. Correct? Yes, yes sir. Uh, just remember, when you guys come back here, um, you're back in your fatigues. Um, when you're with the officers who are you're riding with for FET, ask them questions, get into conversations with them, that's all fine. Uh, attitude, um, tardiness, laziness. As a training officer, you worry. Um, so you, you definitely have that little, little worry factor. You hope that they're going to be riding with like the right officer for them that can you know, teach them things about the road to prepare them for the rest of the academy. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's really, an, it's, it's an exciting time for them, um, but we try to put it in perspective for, to them that you know, just because this is happening today, you're not done. Uh, we're definitely like pretty tight. Um, we've definitely grown together um, through the PT sessions, through the long days. Um, 
So it's it's nice to all be together and uh, get sworn in. It's nice. Uh, going into F FET, just it just seemed like it was going to be like almost like a glorified ride along. So it's going to be like I'm going out there, but I also have body armor on. I also have a loaded gun. I also, you know, they let let us drive sometimes. So it's like I, I'm riding along, and this is super exciting. But like, holy crap! I'm also like the public doesn't know that I'm I'm still a recruit. Like they don't get that. So when you're out there doing stuff, you still have to put on the show that you know what you're doing at this point. FET was awesome. It was great to uh, get out on the road, actually experience what the job is going to be like. Uh, welcome kind of vacation from the academy. Um, it's cool to see what's really in store from us, for us, aside from all of the academy work. It kind of puts a light at the end of the tunnel and a real something to look forward to at the end of the academy. We have come to the end of their required training, almost. And I say almost because one of the most important things that we're getting ready to encounter is scenario week for them. They have gone through traffic stops, use of force, DT, firearms, you name it, they've had training on it. And now it's time to see if they can put everything together into one package and perform to the level that we need them to. Next time on The Journey.